Hello, everybody, and welcome to the new Variety Art Show. We're glad you're back with us again this time. Uh, my name is Brad Zinn, and I'm your host as we get ready to meet another Variety Arts uh, performer of the 90s. And uh, we're glad that you're tuned in. You know, these performers that we have in our programs are really the up-and-coming stars of tomorrow in the field of variety arts. And we have magicians, hypnotists, psychics, belly dancers, caricaturists, uh, and many, many, many more. So don't touch that dial. Stay with us because you're going to meet another fascinating guest today. And uh, right now, I'd like to introduce our musical director, Mr. Van Corriton. Howdy, Brad. Van, thanks for being here again My this week. My pleasure. And uh, we understand that you're still over at the Phoenician, is that correct? That's Tell us right. about that. I'm there for afternoon tea from 3 to 5 p.m., basically seven days a week right there where the view is in the lobby. Well, I, it's beautiful over there. I know it is. It's beautiful. You know, Van, we hope that by giving the folks that are watching a chance to meet these hardworking and fascinating variety arts performers that, uh, that they'll appreciate what they do just a little bit more the <laughs> I'm next sure time they, they will. get to see them. We also want to encourage you, the viewers, to contact us and let us know what you think about the program. If there's a particular program that you've enjoyed especially, or if you have an idea for the program, we'd like you to call us at... Uh, of course, that area code is and let us know what you think. That's real important because that's what makes it all worthwhile. Well, Van, um, we have a, uh, a fascinating guest that, oh, yeah. uh, that uh, we're going to have today, and we're going to try to keep the show real impromptu today, which is another word for disorganized. <laughs> okay. <laughs> have you been following the uh, primaries at all, the, uh, the elections? Uh, that's going on right now. Yeah, they're kind of bizarre, aren't they? Yes, they are very bizarre, but, you know, these political speeches that they give on TV, they're getting so, uh, such low ratings you know, that the, this may be the first presidential election ever to be preempted by a, a late-night movie, <laughs> I think. So, and I figured out why they call them primaries. Why? Because the level of the speeches, that's what they're aimed at. <laughs> primaries. Yes. Well, let me tell you about our guest today, because he is very bizarre, and we have some bizarre music. Is oh, that a candidate. Right? You have yes. a candidate on No, 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 oh. no. He's not, a, he's not running for anything, as far as I know. Oh. But he is a bizarrist, and uh, uh, we're going to let you figure out what that is as we talk to him. His name is Doc. Hilford, and we have a clip to show you of Doc live and in performance at a convention called the Invocation. And this is Doc Hilford presenting uh, himself as a mad scientist, and we think you're going to get a big kick out of it. And when we come back from the clip, we'll get to meet Doc Hilford. Watch your TV and don't go away. Gentlemen, ladies, I am Dr. John Randolph, though. I feel my reputation somewhat precedes me. After my publication on experiments in biochemical education, I've been classified with such greats as Caligari, Jico, and Frankenstein, but I am not mad. Maybe misunderstood, I am not strange all of my experiments are based on sound, scientific fact, and I will show you here tonight a complete demonstration. First of all, someone to help me. First row, please, young lady. Sit here. of mine at the University of East Michigan some years ago discovered an enzyme. Gentlemen, please. <laughs> that can take information from the sensory areas and directly introduce it to the memory of the cerebral cortex. I have isolated this enzyme, which I refer to as NZ9. With the help of many cadavers, I have a small amount of it here now. I'm going to introduce some information into your brain, directly injecting it. When I started these experiments, I used a medium of plain saline, which had some adverse reactions to the nymphic system of the brain. <laughs> I have since used 
a solution of watered down human blood plasma. But for your own safety, I think we should probably strap you into the chair. <laughs> no, sit down! <laughs> see the only way to show great scientific breakthroughs in medicine to muddle-headed buffoons and fools is to do it on myself. You will only be required to pick the simple information. Now being all students of medicine here at the university tonight, I think numbers is something we're all quite familiar with. A three-digit number will be fine. Any three-digit number is this pad and my pen. Don't let me see it. Write down any three-digit number. Understand that any amount of information could be written on this page for the enzymes to carry into my brain. Think of what this could mean for mankind. Full universities of knowledge directly injected into the minds of three-year-old children. <laughs> A new super race. <laughs> Governments topple. A changing of the guard. My God. <laughs> I will prepare the solution now. When you have finished, please. What is your first name? Thank you. Jan, please remove the sheet of paper and fold it up. And I will prepare the plasma solution now. A single drop of the NZ9 is all that's required. the lifeless blood plasma being regenerated by the enzyme changing into living whole human blood. An amazing breakthrough as you watch this. I will take that bit of information. When the blood is completely ready, introduce papers almost beautiful beautiful wonderful now all about, to be injected directly into my brain.
731, the number that... <laughs> 20 stuff from Doc Hilford, our guest today. Did you, did you see that, Van? That was incredible. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we want you to meet a gentleman who is a seeker of and practitioner of the bizarre. He's also a psychic investigator, and he's here with us today, Mr. Doc Hilford. Doc, thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you, Brad. I'm that's real good. glad we finally had a chance to get you on the program. Yeah, we've Thank tried you. to meet together. Yeah, a that's times. some funny stuff there. Now, that was at a convention <laughs> for... Other psychic entertainers or other, other bizarrists? bizarrists. For right. other bizarrists. So there actually are other people that that kind of do what you do, is that yeah, right? Yeah, roughly somewhere between 500 and 1,000 worldwide that uh, do this kind of magic. So it's a very select group yeah. of people then. Well, that's mm -hmm. great. I want to, before we really get heavily into the bizarre stuff, I want to uh, bring people up to date on your background just real briefly where you were born and raised and uh, you had some interesting college days and then uh, once you get out of college, why don't you bring us up to date on kind of your background? Sure, I was uh, born actually in a little town in Illinois uh, near the Mississippi River where my mother put me in a violin case and I drifted like Moses down the river to New Orleans <laughs> and that's, that was the end of my being a Yankee. Uh, <laughs> then I grew up uh, in a number of different places. Uh, uh -huh. I went to about 22 different schools before I got into college. Uh -huh. uh, my dad was an entrepreneur. <laughs> I see. <laughs> nice word for running from the law. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Then I went to the University of New Mexico. I, uh, I, had, I started doing seances for entertainment when I was about eight. Yeah, now seances is where people gather around a table and we try to contact the, uh, the dead, is that right? The spirits? Yeah, the spirit or, or whatever's out there. Or whatever's and, uh, out there. And the candles flicker and go out and the tables thump around and move uh, around. How did you learn to do that? I mean, was this, uh, is this a gift or well, did you I, study? Well, I uh, picked up a book at the library and uh -huh. read that it could be done. And I, th I think all kids play around with it when they sleep over uh -huh. and uh, we had played like around telling with ghost it. stories right, in like the dark. just exactly yeah. like yeah. telling ghost stories um, and I was uh, hooked on monster movies at an early age so we started playing with that uh, I both my parents worked and most of the kids in the neighborhoods parents worked so we had about an hour and a half each night so after school. So what you're saying is you had a lot of free time on right, your hands. Right, and yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it got me in trouble spooking yeah. the other kids. Now let's talk about when you got to college. You, uh, you also are an artist. You did some, uh, uh, besides being bizarre, a uh, bizarrist and having a bizarre sense of humor, you did some publishing in college. What yeah, was that about? I had Clam Comics, the comic that goes squirt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was asked to leave school a couple times with uh, that comic. Uh -huh. It was eventually edited down a little bit. And well, I see, lower I key, see. Well, we have a family show here, so yeah. maybe we shouldn't go into <laughs> what, what was it that went squirt, but... Uh, Politics. Oh, Politics. I see. Okay. Now, also, you have a background in uh, music. And uh, Van, you'll be interested to hear about this. Uh, why don't you tell us how you got involved with uh, music? Yeah, well, what I did was I hooked up, uh, I was on the other end of the mics. Uh, I would hook them up and make people loud for about <laughs> nine years. Uh, I did almost 500 different bands with a sound company called Gopher Baroque. Gopher Audio. Baroque. <laughs> Well, who yeah. are some of the people you worked with? I worked with uh, Tammy Wynette and Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson and the Cool and the Gang and lots of R&B bands of the 70s and 80s. Uh, I ended up being stage manager for Alice Cooper. And oh. The way that happened was he would call down to my hotel room and say, uh, I need my maracas to look like hand grenades and I want them done in the morning. <laughs> So I had to do those kind of things on top of my uh, daily audio. Uh -huh. So you were doing audio. some special effects for it. Right, and then so eventually when the company left, he uh, 
he kept me on. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but my wife, Brenda, who's uh, running the audio, doing your job, actually, on our show, <laughs> uh, she grew up about a block from Alice Cooper. And so uh, she tells me that he was weird uh, all the time. She, she must have up. lived just behind the swamp and across from the graveyard. I right think, Yeah, I think that was it. I think that was it. Now, uh, let's... Uh, uh, we want to, before we get too further, make sure that we make the distinction here uh, between bizarrest entertainment and uh, make sure that people don't misunderstand that this is not satanic or a cult uh, type of thing. So mm -hmm. can you define really what you do? Oh, sure. Um, actually, it's a mixture of some of the real things. I belong to the Psychic Entertainers Association uh -huh. and uh, some theatrics. Um, letting the audience dis determine which is real and uh, which is theatrics. Uh, though some of it may seem, uh, mostly not what I do, but a lot of other bazaars do occult-oriented themes with some of the magic uh -huh. they do. Uh, I have actually lectured to different churches on uh, what to look for, uh, if your children are involved in uh, satanic cults. Or There's been like some that. local interest in that mm -hmm. recently. Uh. In fact, in Albuquerque, uh, I was called in to do something. Out There's a West Mesa on the west side of Albuquerque. They found uh, these huge circles in the desert uh, uh -huh. set with rocks, and there had been uh, horse hooves and cattle hoof prints all over it. And whoever found it didn't know what it was, and they called the police, and the police called around. Uh -huh. uh, a friend of mine and I were asked to come out there, and, and we looked, and we didn't see anything satanic about it. Uh, eventually, like within a couple of days, it was found out that that was the old J.C. Rodeo. Oh. <laughs> Spot. So sometimes there's a <laughs> sometimes simple ex explanation. Nothing there, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's talk about something else, another talent that you have, and that is uh, fire eating, as I understand. Yeah, it's exactly. a hard way to make an easy living. I think so. <laughs> now, a lot, of people, a lot of people see fire eaters on television or maybe at the circus, the carnival, or whatever, and they think that this is a gag, that this no. is not for real. So maybe you can uh, tell us what's involved in that. Is that well, it's, a, it's an understanding of, of really of physics, of the triangle of fire, and, and knowing that there's oxygen, heat, and fuel. And if you separate any of those, the fire doesn't work. Um, there is cool fire and hot fire. Uh, I try to stay in the cool areas. Now, <laughs> I, I burned really badly once. I was uh, uh, opening for uh, Ozark Mountain Daredevils in the 70s, and I had a big cowboy hat on, and I used to do the blow-off where you would take a shot of kerosene and ignited as it blew out. Some people call that the volcano, too. Right, Is that right. right. I, I blew rings of, of fire and, and had oh, a ring so within a, little, a ring. Yeah, a little special. It was, it was artsy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I hit the brim of my hat with it, and it bounced back and covered my head and hands with oh flames. And I looked down, and I had taken my jacket off, so I picked it up and wrapped it around my head and hands. And uh, it made the press, and the crowd thought it was part of the act, and it, 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 was, it was terrific. Nobody knew it was an accident. Meanwhile, you were terrified. Well, yeah, it was, it was quick, a big blister for a few days. thinking on your yeah. part uh, <laughs> to, to be on fire and be able to think that fast. Well, kids at home, don't try this. It's uh, very dangerous unless you have uh, expert instruction. Yeah, first, clean your room, and, and then you can try <laughs> That's it. That's right. They usually never clean their room, so they'll That's never right. be playing with it. Now, you're also a uh, published uh, author. Uh, you, you actually uh, teach other uh, entertainers. Uh, ideas and uh, things to do, presentations yeah. and such. Uh, you brought along some tapes. Yeah, or something? a few of them. I've I've uh, done fourteen uh, books and tape sets for other magicians. Uh, this now these are not available to the general public. No. This is a very specialized uh, piece of information right. that you've put together specifically for other entertainers. But I think it lends to your credibility. This one is sure. called Weird. Weird. Now, you intentionally misspelled it. Right. That, That's uh, the name of my Let publishing me, uh, company. Let's uh, tilt sure. that down okay. just a little bit so we don't get any glare on there. And, there, and uh, Doc Hilford. Uh, right. There are 34, 35, 36 different weird effects for other magicians. So uh -huh. that magicians that are used to doing tricks with bunnies maybe will start doing them with jackals instead. Oh, and I see. I from see. doves to ravens. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, are, what are some of the others that, uh, that we uh, have here? This is uh, actually uh, how to make a living with side parties. A side party is what I do a lot of. I go to people's homes. And I do palm readings for everyone at the uh, oh. at their home, and the the 
the woman there has a big party. It's sort of like Tupperware, but it, it, not really. Oh, I see. <laughs> she brings in all of her friends, and we, we all have a real good time and, and learn a little bit about... Uh, Instead of sealing in the freshness, you seal in their fate. That's it. Oh, I That's see. That's it. Okay. <laughs> now, you may not believe this. I do three Yeah, I to saw four. this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this earlier. You have, to, you have to get this. Leave this on camera for a second. Go this ahead and tell them what making a living playing daycares and preschools. I do three or four daycares and preschools every day. I did almost a thousand shows last year. Uh -huh. um, not all preschools, but uh, yeah. total. Um, what I, I don't do bizarre magic. Some is I was going to say, they'd be running, screaming but, out of uh, there. Yeah, I don't do any of the spooky things. Well, no, I can't say that. On Halloween, I, uh, I read Edgar Allan Poe by candlelight to preschoolers and elementary school kids because that's what the school had hired me to Must do. Must be your favorite time of year. Yeah, You've uh, brought some stuff with you to do, and I don't want to uh, run out of time here, so I want to be able to get into this. We're going to see a little demonstration of what Doc does, sure. and we have a little table over here. And while he's getting that set up, what, uh, what I will do here is see who have we got that's available. This is a... Uh, a publication that Doc Hilford is uh, putting out uh, called The Invocation, is that the right? New the invocation. New Invocation. And this Opposed is a to the old uh, monthly uh, publication, is that Bi -monthly. right? Bi-monthly. Bi-monthly publication, which uh, covers some of the bizarre stuff that uh, that he does. So, here, read up, Van. Maybe, yeah. you, can, maybe you can, you know, make the keyboard levitate or something. <laughs> okay. So, Okay, we have some interesting props set out here. and. I have no idea what you're about to do. I have never seen this before, so you... Uh, you'll love it. You'll okay, love it. You'll, you'll be doing it next time. <laughs> okay. <I'm sorry. laughs> well, I, I'd rather see you do it, actually. Uh, w what I have, Brad, is actually this is a, uh, a small piece of artwork that there were only three made in the entire world. This was made in 1927 by an artist in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And it's a solid silver death's head. And, and death's head. You can go head. ahead and Ooh. take a look at that. Okay, solid silver. It's a little uh, little skull there. Yes. And we're going to play a game with death right now. We're going now. to play a game with death. Yes, I brought some... Uh, I'm scared already. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> okay. Some of the devil's picture book. Uh oh. These are now we promised everybody products. this was not satanic, but we're just no. this is just uh, just spooky. Just spooky. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Do you want me to set this? Yeah, down? you can set that okay. down there. Whoop. These are uh, tarot cards. Each one, actually, the normal playing cards we all use right now came from the tarot card. This is the thirteenth card, the death card. Ah. This is the fool. It has no number. Oh, that must That's be my card. <laughs> <laughs> it's the devil card. This is very popular with certain rock groups. This is the tower card. But they're all representative of, of different things. Uh -huh. um, we'll play... G Wait just a minute. I thought I heard something, Bradley. I <laughs> Death knows your name, Brad. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. I oh, wait. He has a message for you, too. Can May I quote you on that? You know what I think this is, Van, is one of my former agents, <laughs> I think, <laughs> former it's girlfriend. Really, uh, <laughs> it, it, it could be. Let me, let me write something down here. It looks as if there's something written on this. This are merely ruins, which are... Ruins, okay. Those are another, another fortune-telling device. Right, absolutely. Right? Symbols for telling fortunes. So, uh, Doc is writing down a message from, from death. From is death that? himself. Uh, <laughs> having wonderful time, wish you were here. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. And yes, I now think is this the kind of thing you would do in people's too. homes at a at a private party? In that, right yeah. for for the weird or bizarre. Yes. Um, okay. All right. Of course, it's it's different for. We each only have group. about two minutes left here, so I want to make sure we get All through right. this. Brad, right. we'll set this right up here on. Okay, WC's on top of WC head. there, and uh, and I'm uh, going to take a few of these cards out and lay them down here and we'll play a little game what I in fact we'll start the hourglass now Ooh. too and take a few of these there's run three. Dorothy run <laughs> there's six there's nine ten eleven oh, these last two Thirteen. Thirteen cards. cards. And That's the mystical number. The mystical number. I'm going to spread them around. If, if you'd help me, just don't okay. turn them over. Just okay. spread we'll them just, all around. All right. These are spread out now. Surely. Right. And you see the sand is running. Yes, we, we don't have a lot of time, so we'll... 
Nor do you, Brad. Nor do I. I want you to take the I've, silver death's head okay. and set it on any one of these cards. Now, I have a free choice. A of free choice. A of free any choice one. of any one of these, right. and I'm going to set it on one of the cards, okay? That's right. Let's try to pick one that's not quite too obvious. Good. All right, right over there. Now, as the time moves out, since we don't have much time, I'm going to make it even less time, Brad. Uh oh. Uh oh. Just like your life, the time is running out. I, I want you to move that skull to any other card. Okay. And then take your hand away. Does it have to be one next to it? or No, it can be any other card. Okay, and, I'll and, move it over and, here. and you can, there you go. And, and move it to another one and continue doing that until the sand runs out of the hourglass. Oh, okay. Because you're playing a game with death and you're trying not to land on the death card. Oh, I see. Okay. There are 12 other cards right, right. and one death card. And you realize we are playing for your soul here, so uh -oh. if you do land on the death card, I hate to think about it, but you've got 12 chances to win and only one chance to lose. Well, I like those you odds. That's better than the lottery. Just a few then. seconds okay. left. It looks Sand as if... is running out, and I'm, oops, moving. Sorry about that. That's fine, and there. Oh, okay. I'm out of time. You're out of time. Mm. Hopefully. Let's, I hope I didn't hope land on and the death pray. card here that you didn't land on the death card. This card is, ah, the star. The star. It shows bright promise, a healthy future. Oh, I feel Success. much better. Oh, good. It we could use some of that around here. Very good. That's a very lucky card that you landed on. Oh, good. But what's really interesting is, is read what death told me before we even started. Now, this is the prediction, okay? And it says, Brad will beat me by landing on a star. That's, that's fabulous. That's pretty bizarre, except, quickly, let me show you that, indeed, you didn't have oh my 12 goodness. chances All of these to are the win. death card. You had 12 chances to lose and only one to win. To win. Yeah. Isn't that spooky? Incredible. Van? Rather spooky. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, Doc Hilford, thank you for thank being you, here. Brad, You've been a much. wonderful guest. Will you come back again? I We've sure got will. lots I'd more to talk to. about. Van, play us out with something. Thanks for being here. Don't forget, everybody, Van's at the Phoenician, and Doc Hilford will be spooking you everywhere, so look out for him. Meanwhile, tune in next week, same time, when we return with another edition of the new Variety Arts Show. Remember, support Variety Arts in your community. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>